Hi there and welcome to Lorena's Labyrinth. My name's Anna Pirelli. The comments that you see here are my views, beliefs, opinions, and sometimes they are not even my fully formed views, beliefs, and opinions. However, they are my understandings. Please do retain an open mind and reflect on any of the content and your comfort levels. If your views differ, please feel free to leave a comment. Also remember, it is possible to disagree in respectful ways. My way is not necessarily your way and vice versa. You might also find that some of the content on this playlist um, in regard to spiritual or universal laws, it resonates with you, meaning it feels right to you, while other laws may not feel right or they may not feel comfortable. If this is the case, the information is either not right for you or it is not right for you right now, and it might never be right for you at any given time. It really doesn't matter. As an earthy and practical person, I can put my hand up with all honesty and say that I have at different times had the same feelings about some of the content in here. And with some of them, I still have a level of scepticism uh, within my viewpoints, but I choose to retain an open mind about the things that I don't fully understand for a few reasons. Firstly, because I believe it would be supreme arrogance to think that we all know all of the answers while we have a body. Um, and because what is right for one of us is not necessarily right or suitable for all of us and I choose to respect the differences. Please do leave your uh, opinions, beliefs, uh, feel free to argue the points in a respectful way um, with any of the content on the slides and even my interpretations and if you feel that you can add clarity around some of the content we would all love to see it. Thank you. For now though let's explore the laws. All creation is governed by law. The principles that operate in the outer universe, discoverable by scientists, are called natural laws. But there are subtler laws that rule the hidden spiritual planes and the inner realm of consciousness. Contained within these laws, or conditions, is the true nature of matter. Knowledge of these laws has an effect upon the mental urges. Mind is the builder. Stay in full mindfulness of the application of universal law as related to self and to others, and know that in love all life is given, in love all things move. In giving one attains, in giving one acquires, in giving, love becomes the fulfillment of desire, guided and directed in the ways that bring the more perfect knowledge of self as related to the universal, all-powerful, all-guiding all divine influence in life. Love is life. When we go back, merge with the God Source, in some infinitesimal but profound way, we expand the mind of God. Our higher self always points the best and most perfect way and it is ours to listen and choose or reject what we hear. It does not blame, but patiently tries again to show the perfect way, the loving way. All of creation pushes forth. We are ever becoming. Identity ever remains. Universal Law Number 48 Law of the Lotus This refers to the egoic lotus or the flowering of self and includes knowledge, love and sacrifice. So this seems to be a very simple law, of course, when it says this refers to the law of the lotus, refers to the egoic lotus or the flowering of self and includes knowledge, love and sacrifice, sacrifice rather. I would take it a bit further and say it refers to the information contained in the Hindu text about the Lotus Sutra. Now my pronunciations of course may be somewhat inadequate again today so my apologies in advance. Um, so what I had to do was a little bit of research and looking into this um, and they have been recorded um, or the Lotus Sutra has been recorded in the Sadama Pandarika Sutra I believe um, and it has two central teachings um, that have, I'll just read 
what I've got actually, which have um, apparently been very influential for Mayana Buddhism, and it focus on the focuses on the older traditions of Buddhism, but also allows some space for some more uh, modern doctrines. Apparently, now feel free to correct me if I am wrong, because I may be. Um, what I understand is that the essence of the lotus is what we would call enlightenment to the highest order. Um, when we refer to Buddhahood or I personally prefer to call it aligned with the divine creator, the source, all that I am, infinite uh, wisdom, the eternal. Um, but basically it's that the person has re achieved their enlightenment um, but didn't need to enter into the final stages of Nirvana but instead remains active in teaching Dharma. Now I interpret this because it basically talks about how if I was going to really simplify it down, which I think is probably the best way to do it, it's they obviously have transcended and left their body behind. The spirit goes on, grows, evolves, um, and continues to become uh, more and more enlightened. That is, the aura speeds up, they obtain more information, more knowledge, and uh, they live by the highest values and virtues, living morally. Right now, of course, we're talking about spirit life here. We're not talking about phys physical life, right? Um, I and I couldn't see there whether um, when they talk about um, the Lotus Supra and this uh, Lotus Supra, good grief, Lotus Sutra, and with this expansion of their soul, whether or not they're teaching um, spirit or whether or not they're teaching humanity. Um, I must admit that when I was uh, looking into this, the first thing that came to my mind was that Kuan Yin, as a goddess of mercy, um, my understanding of her, because clearly she was a Buddhist, uh, is that she made the decision that she didn't want to ascend all the way to Nirvana and that she continues to help people on the earth plane um, through the extension of mercy as part of her mission, I guess, um, to, to um, I'm stumbling. Basically, she sees her mission as being one where she remains on the earth plane and she assists the rest of us that have got bodies to raise our vibration and transform our physical existence um, to awaken us to the divinity, which obviously we call God by whatever name you want to, to call it. So coming back to the Lotus Sutra and the fact that this law speaks of the flowering, it could relate to something like what I've just explained with Kuan Yin, or it could apply to the concepts of ascended masters who have all worked in, uh, who have all walked the earth plane. Um, they've been embodied at some point in time, but it sounds to me like they don't go through the final stage um, which according to one of the other laws, I think it might be disintegration, where we all reach a point where we become one and then we um, re-emerge as individuals. Anyway, that's a little bit probably over the top. Um, I'm obviously always interested to hear what other people have got to say and how they interpret it. Feel free to leave a comment and see if you can expand on this and maybe we can nut it out. This is one of those occasions where it's like Krishna, Krishna Murti, if that's how you pronounce his name, where it would be really good to sit around, have a coffee, have a chin wag, and just have a yap about, well, what do you make of that? You know, well, it could be like this. I interpret this. You know, that's what I would like to be doing. Anyway, have a wonderful, glorious day. Please do leave a comment. Take care. Bye-bye.